Number 14 says a liquid has a density of 1.65 grams per cubic centimeter. It flows through a horizontal pipe of varying cross sections as, the figure, as in the figure below. In the first section, the cross-sectional area is 10 square centimeters. The flow speed is 283 centimeters per second, and the pressure is 1.2 times 10 to the fifth pascals. In the second section, the cross-sectional area is 3 centime square centimeters. A. Calculate the smaller section's flow speed, and B. Calculate the smaller section's pressure. So in, in the last video for the question number 13, I showed you how to derive the, the equation of continuity, which is the area 1 times, times the velocity 1 equals the area 2 times velocity 2. What in our pipe, uh, this area, let's say this is a circle, this is a, this is a tube, so the area of the, of the cross section um, is uh, multiplied by the velocity, the, the flow of the fluid. For this section, where it's larger, is going to be equal to this area here times the velocity it's going. And so you can kind of tell intuitively that whenever the pipe shrinks down, the velocity will increase. But we're going to go ahead and calculate exactly what that's going to be. Area 1 it tells us in the problem is 10 square centimeters and it tells us that area 2 is equal to uh, 3 3 square centimeters and it tells us that velocity 1 is equal to it's 283 centimeters per second I'm going to convert that into 2.83 meters per second because the question wants the answer in meters per second so when we solve this equation for V2, we're, what we're going to get is that V2 equals A1 times V1 over A2. And so when we plug in our numbers, we're going to get 10 times, times 2.83 divided by 3, and this is going to equal V2. And so the velocity 2 is 9.433 meters per second. So it sped up uh, from 2 to 9 meters per second by decreasing the cross-sectional area. And now part B wants to know the pressure uh, when it goes into the smaller area. And so what we're going to do really quick is look at Bernoulli's equation and then we're going to try to apply Bernoulli's equation to our question. So if you can imagine that there's fluid traveling through here then then if it travels this distance the the when it travels this distance the work done is equal to so we'll call this distance change of x is equal to the force times the change of x and we know that when we're dealing with fluids that that uh we can we can say that pressure is equal to the force divided by the area and so we can say that force is equal to pressure times area. So we can exchange this for, for force in our equation. We can say that wor the work done is equal to the pressure times the area times the change of x. And you can see that area times volume, or area times change of x is, is equal to, to volume. So the work done here is equal to the pressure times the volume. But also, whenever work is done down here, because the fluid cannot be compressed, we're talking about an ideal fluid, an exact same amount of fluid has to go out up here. And so the work up here, the work, the work initial, the, the work initial down here is the pressure one times the, the volume one. And the work up here, uh, the work uh, final, is equal to the pressure two times the volume two but there's actually a negative sign right here in front of pressure because the work uh, the work is going in this direction but the pressure is being is in that direction so the pressure down here is in the same direction as the work the pressure up here is in the opposite direction of the work so it's a negative pressure times the volume so we get that the work of the fluid of the fluid is equal to the pressure 1 times the volume plus 
the pressure 2 times the volume. And so we have an equation for the work of the fluid, but we also know that we can define work, and so we'll call it the work of the fluid, as equal to the change of kinetic energy plus, plus the change of potential energy. In this particular example, we can see that the, po the potential energy is increasing. So part of the work in, in here is used to increase the potential energy, changing the earth-water uh, system. And so the, the kinetic energy, we could call the, kinet the change of kinetic energy. Remember we said the, the kinetic energy in the past, we've described it as one half of the mass times the velocity squared. So the change in kinetic energy is going to be one half of the mass uh, times the, the final velocity squared minus one half of the mass times the initial velocity squared. And you'll notice that the, the velocities will change, but the mass will stay the same. And the change in potential energy, the change in potential energy is equal to the mass times gravity times y2 minus the mass times the gravity times the initial location. So this is the final potential energy. This is the initial potential energy. This is the final kinetic energy. This is the initial kinetic energy. So what we've done is we've found how much they have changed. And if this uh, equation for the work of fluid, if we exchange our our kinetic energy for the equation for kinetic energy, and if we exchange our potential energy for the the equation for potential energy, then we can set um, we can set that work of the fluid is equal to one half of m v squared final minus one half of m v initial squared plus the mass times the gravity times the final y location minus the mass times the gravity of the initial y location. And then since we also have another equation for fluid that's P1 time plus, uh, P1V times P2V, we can set this equal to this. And so we get the equation that the potential, uh, the, the pressure times the volume uh, initially minus the, minus the final pressure times the volume is equal to one-half times the mass times the vo the final velocity minus the initial velocity so the kinetic the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy and now we see that in this term in this side of the equation velocity is in both terms i'm i'm not velocity but volume volume is in both terms however it's not in all the terms over here it's not in any of the terms over here but we do get something interesting if we divide everything by the volume. So if we divide by volume over here, we get the P1 minus P2. And that w when we set that equal, um, if you notice, each one of these terms has mass in it. Mass is in every term. And when you divide mass by volume, that's the equation for density. And so what we end up getting is 1 half times density times the final velocity squared minus 1 half times density times the initial velocity squared plus density times gravity times the final y location minus density times gravity times the initial y location. Now this is basically uh, Bernoulli's equation. Actually, the way it's typically expressed is where the terms are rearranged so that all of the minuses, all of the minuses get added to this side and this gets added to this side so that you get p1 plus one half of one half of the density times the initial velocity squared plus the the density times gravity times y1 uh, the initial y location is equal to is equal to p2 plus one half of density times the final velocity squared plus uh, density times gravity times the final y location. 
And so this is how Bernoulli's uh, equation is typically written, um, and sometimes it's written a little bit different. But uh, what we what we need is just for this up here because um, in our in our situation the potential energy doesn't change, so we get we are allowed to get rid of half of this of this equation because our potential energy doesn't change. It, this term turns to zero because the change in potential energy is zero. So when you add zero to something, you, it stays the exact same. So we're getting rid of that whole portion of the equation. We're just saying that the initial pressure minus the final pressure is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy divided by the volume. So I'm just going to rearrange the equation so that I have the initial pressure and the final pressure on opposite sides of each other. That requires me to bring the initial kinetic energy divide it by volume over and uh, leave this one over here. And then I can subtract this term over to this side and so I'll get that the initial pressure uh, plus one half times the density times the velocity initial squared minus one half of the density times the velocity final squared is going to be equal to the final pressure. Before we can go on now, we have our equation, but there's just one thing that's wrong with our information. In the problem, it gives us that the density is 1.65 uh, grams per cubic centimeter. We've got to turn this into kilograms per, per cubic meter. And so we've got to plug in a conversion factor. And for our, our grams, the conversion is 1 kilogram is 1,000 grams. And for the centimeter, it's not quite so obvious um, because uh, what you have to do is uh, you take the, your normal conversion from centimeters to, to meters, which is uh, 0 0.01, and you have, to multi you have to take that to the third power. So that gives you six decimal places instead of instead of two you get six decimal places so you got five zeros and a one so when we multiply this the grams are going to cancel and then the centimeters are going to cancel we're going to be left with kilograms and meters cubed and so what you will end up with is 1.65 1.65 kilograms over 0 0.001 meters cubed and so that's equal to 1,650 kilograms per, per meter cubed. And this is the density that we'll use for our, for our equation. So the problem tells us that the pressure one is 100 and, uh, 120,000 120, pascals. And, that the, so, and then we're going to add that to one-half times times the the density which is 1650 uh, kilograms per cubic meter and we're going to multiply that by the the initial velocity which we and we're going to square it 2.83 squared and then we're going to subtract out uh, we're going to subtract out one half times times 1650 times uh, the final velocity we said was nine nine point four three we've got to square that and you know if you wanted to simplify this you could factor out the one half times the times the density in both of those terms so you would get you would get one half times sixteen fifty multiplied by two point eight three squared minus nine point four three squared when you plug all that into your calculator, you should get something close to 53,244.3 pascals.